Hey guys, my name is Jake from White House on the Hill, and today we're gonna to show you how to build one of these. Let's get started. All right, so really quick up front, if you wanna see where something happens in this video, just look across the timestamps at the timeline below this video and you'll be able to select the exact spot you wanna to go to if you're looking for help on how to do something. So the details on this chicken coop or chicken tractor, it is four feet wide by about six and a half feet deep, about five feet tall. So you can actually walk in, change out the food and water, you can put nesting boxes in here, you can collect the eggs from the inside. And it's big enough to where you can get in it, it's small enough to where you can make this all out of eight foot two by four. Now a really quick background on chicken coops and chicken tractors. A chicken coop was just a structure that you would build for your chickens. You'd let them out during the day. The problem with the static or the stationary chicken coop is that it doesn't allow you to get onto fresh grass. The perk of a chicken tractor or something that's mobile, this does have wheels on it, is that you can move it around, move them to a new space. The problem with that is that sometimes they are way too big and way too heavy and so you've got to use a vehicle to pull it around or they're too lightweight. They're made out of PVC or something just really light and then either wind's going to blow them around or or predators are gonna break into. So it. after about four years of using mobile chicken coops, we've come up with something that is strong enough, but it's small enough and lightweight enough that even our seven-year-old can move it around. I can get in it at six foot two, not hit my head every time. And it allows us to do a number of things. Uh, we're using it for 27 chicks over there. And then I've got 31 meat chickens over here. We're not gonna raise them in this the entire time. They are gonna outgrow this, but this allows us to use it as a brooder to get them out of the brooder room, get them onto grass immediately. This is for full-size chickens. I would say about six to 10 chickens could live in here comfortably. If you wanna use it for ducks or pheasants or some other kind of bird, quail, I think this would work great. What I actually need to do is build one today because we've been using this for our turkey. We have a full-size turkey in this little thing. We've kept mamas and their chicks in this in the past. So we're gonna build one of these today. I'm gonna show you cut by cut. I also have PDF plans. You can go down into the link in the description, download the PDF file. Those plans are absolutely free. If you'd like to donate to just support what we're doing here to thank us for putting this together, please feel free to click the donation link. Those plans are free to you and I hope you get a lot of use out of them. You ready to build a chicken coop, Joey? Let's do it. We're starting out with the top level, laying it out to connect it to the bottom of the chicken coop. The sides are two eight foot boards connected by one 45 inch board. Make sure the board is 16 inches from the end and use an angle square to get it straight. Then move that out of the way so you can build the bottom part. Cut two boards at 79 inches. These are the sides of the bottom. Cut the next board at 48 inches and the other half of the board at 45 inches. Connect the 48 inch board at the back end and screw the 45 inch board in the front. The front is where the doors will eventually go. Cut four boards at 17 inches. These connect the top section to the bottom section. There's probably a better way to do this. We put the top portion on top of the 17 inch board and screw them together. We manage it a little easier with doing two at a time instead of all four 17 inch boards. Now you can flip it over to connect the bottom half to it. Screw it together with four inch screws and flip it back over. This is the toughest part of the build. This is the cuts for the roof, making a 65 degree angle. And this, the most it can do, is 60 degrees, so I've got to adjust it myself based off the angle I need. If you don't have a saw that has angles, buy a cheap protractor to draw the angle on the boards. Then draw out the notch to rest on the sidewalls. Measure 35 and a fourth inches from the top and make a right angle that's one and a half inches in and two inches down. We use a table saw to make the cuts. Then install the six boards into the three roof supports, screwing them in on the sides and in the middle. The middle boards are at 40 inches since the side boards are 80 inches long. After installing the supports, we added extra screws inside for strength. Now we're cutting the roof connectors. Depending on where you put the middle roof support, these boards will be around 37 and a half inches long. The four boards will connect at an angle, so you can easily connect the tin or wire roof later on. Now let's build the doors. There are four boards at each door. The first board at the bottom is 21 and a half inches. Cut at 
45 degrees on both ends of these. The board to the outside is 20 inches long. Only make a 45 degree cut on one end of the The inside board is 46 and 3 fourths inches long. Cut one end at 45 degrees. Connect the three boards together. Then lay it out against the roof to determine the angle of the top door board. Mark your angle so you can mark your cuts on the inside door board and on top door board. Now you can connect the top door board to the rest of the door. With the doors built, you can check their fit by installing them first. Then, when you're happy with that, you can put the hardware cloth on both sides. All right, this part is optional, but I highly recommend it. Having some kind of door stop on the inside so when the door closes, it hits that and stops right there. You can have a long scrap piece of wood. You can have a little block that comes over something just to stop the door on the inside from closing in all the way. Install the fencing on the door. We prefer hardware cloth over anything else. It is stronger than chicken wire and has smaller holes than welded wire. It's perfect for protecting chickens from predators. Put the doors back on the coop and install a barrel vault at the bottom so predators can't pull the doors open. And install a safety hasp about 14 inches down so you can keep the doors locked. Now you can install the interior hardware cloth around the bottom of the coop. It's two feet tall, so a 25 foot roll of two foot hardware cloth will work perfect around the coop. If you don't have an air compressor or a staple gun, you can always just hammer in large fencing staples. It's just a little more work. For the back wall, we use a two foot by four foot section of hardware cloth. And filled in the gap we had at the top with a scrap piece of wire. All water. right, so we're at the point where we can start to put the roof on, but before we do that, since it is kind of short in here, it's about five feet in the middle and just about two feet here on the side. So it starts to get tight uh, up top. So it's easier to work on the roosting bars and anything hanging you're gonna do in here for feeders or waters right now before you put the roof in. So on our other tractors, we put in a couple of roosting bars in the back. And we're making this one specifically for our male turkey. Other chickens will be in it at some point. He's just gonna be in it for a while, but uh, we need a little bit more space than that back corner for how big he is. So you think something like this, or like do you right want to, here, or if we just put one straight across right there. A hanging deal right here, a little eye hook, that, so we can hang some kind of food or water right here as well. Now we're drilling the holes for the wheels. We're installing eight inches from the front, drilling a half inch hole for the carriage bolts. For the handlebar to pull the coop, we're using a one inch piece of conduit. You can use a metal or wood bar here. Just drill a hole two inches from the end, install the bar, and screw it in to keep it from sliding out. Now you can stall the wheels so we can pull this bad boy outside. We're installing boards at the bottom of the roof to block any predators from sneaking inside there. These cuts are around 37 and a half inches and we trim the boards to two inches wide to fit under the roof. You may notice we've got these little metal sheeting screws and we'll just use them in with that and screw those in to hold tin sheeting to the chicken tractor. We're using leftover tin sheeting from our ditch for the roof. You could use metal for a solid and light roof or you could use a tarp. Just be sure to put some welded wire underneath so predators can't get to the birds inside. Now comes the fun part. Bend the roof over the top. If you'd rather cut it, just install a ridge piece so water doesn't seep through the middle of the roof. All right, we're in the home stretch. I just need to cut off this bottom, paint it, and we're done. Finally, trim the excess tin. You can use tin snips or a grinder to shred the extra metal. We still in the old holes in the metal and paint it. All right, we are all done with this build. I just need to spray paint it. I know it's bad for the environment. But since we're using some old nasty tin, I'm gonna sharpen it up with this to give it a nice clean finish and then we'll move in the turkey. And that is it. It is done, doesn't it look sharp? If you guys are building this at home, so excited for you guys. I hope you'll share it with us. Be sure to leave it down in the comments. Let us know that you've built this and then send us some pictures through social media, tag and us. And show us if you've made any modifications. We'd love to see different varieties of the mini coop. Now we just mowed some area today for our turkey, our pheasants, our peacocks, our mandarin ducks and chickens. And we're gonna move them right over here tonight. So I need to get this in place and get all of those birds moved over there. All right, we got all of our chicken tractors in place. 
our mandarin ducks, our peacocks, our red golden pheasants, our teenage chickens, and where Slater will sleep for the next few weeks anyway. I'll put up the electric fence and I'll show you Slater coming out of this in the morning. So give me a sign. Texting me, we're 